that's all right that's all right part right. two today if you want part one it was a few weeks ago possibly a month or month and a half ago and you'll be able to get that on youtube all of our presentations and hello our youtube visitors uh, youtube um, viewers thank you for joining us all of our presentations are available on youtube if you type in true temperance international in the search bar on YouTube, you'll get um, the access to all of our previous presentations. Um, but for now, um, we would like to remind, uh, remind you, if it's your first time on here, we do have support groups that keeps you going throughout the week because each week we set a challenge. And um, sometimes it's more challenging than others and you need that little bit of encouragement but also it's just nice to have a family where you can speak to each other and share recipes, share ideas and things like that and pray for one another. So we have a spiritual health telegram group. We have a men's wellness telegram group and we have a women's wellness telegram group. Do we have anything else? I think that's it for the time. We have the essential oils. Right. So Louise is reminding us that we have weekly programs as well as the every week we do the family health show on a Saturday afternoon. We also have um, on Tuesdays, we have a spiritual health Bible study. So a, a Bible study. And we send links on the Telegram groups and on first. And the Bible study is what time? Seven o'clock. Thank you, Lewis. Yes. And Lewis has been taking us through the Bible study last week. So it's excellent, excellent Bible study. Fantastic. OK. And um, on Thursdays at six o'clock, we have the, as Lu Louise was saying, the essential oils. I actually have some here. But anyway. Yeah, we have the essential oils and that's information about your health and how essential oils can help to improve that as well. We also have, uh, we have, uh, I've, I've forgotten what things are called today right now. What you, an internet, a website, there you go, we have a website as well. But if you need some information about it, our admin team are on here as well and they are putting the links in the chat right now. So last week, our presentation was all, it was from Louis, uh, from Lucille at Manor House, Lucille Pfeiffer, and who, sorry, Fifield, and who can remind me what the, what the challenge was? Okay, the topic was hypertension. Was it, um, okay. was it juicing um, beetroot? Um, was it Onions. celery? Celery and um, is it garlic? Is it garlic? Yes, and garlic. What else? And um, it's well. it, it? It a week challenge, seven day was challenge. It, was it? Was it? Was it? Parsley. 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 Okay, I'll help you out there. Yes. So it was. The first, it was in, in two parts. The first part was to, if you don't have one... Oh, sorry, buy a blood pressure monitor. Sorry, yeah. Buy a blood pressure monitor, that's right. Buy a blood pressure monitor and use it, okay? Because sometimes we have these things in boxes and the boxes gather dust. So buy a blood pressure monitor and use it to find out what your blood pressure is. We were told what the normal um, values of uh, millim millimetres of mercury, the, the normal pressure is. And then we were told what would be considered to be hypertension, so a high blood pressure, stage one, stage two, etc. And then if you did have high blood pressure, the part two of the challenge was to juice beetroot, celery, garlic. I think there was one other ingredient. I can't remember what. Tomatoes. And, oh, tomatoes. thank you. Tomatoes, that's right. Tomatoes. And then you juice that and then put it in a blender. And in fact, you would blend the garlic. You wouldn't juice the garlic. So you blend, you juice your tomato, your beetroot and your celery, put it in a blender and then blend in your garlic and drink that. Okay, so is there anybody who would look, wish to unmute? And sorry, again, if this is your first time, what we normally do is we go through the challenge 
about the first 20 minutes and then we go into the topic of presentation. So is there anybody that would like to unmute to let us know if you did the challenge? Hi, uh, Sharon. Who's that? Sorry, it's Louise here, the other Louise. Sorry, Louise. Hi, Louise. I didn't actually do the challenge, even though I think it's a wonderful challenge because my blood pressure is normally perfect or a little bit under. So I didn't want to take my blood pressure any lower than it should be because when I do that, I go whoa, 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 like this. So unfortunately, I couldn't do the challenge. But um, I know some people have used some similar ingredients with some very, very, very good results. How quick do the results come? Well, when I put some of my clients on it, they had some of their pressures within like two to three days. It was within two, two days. Within two, three days, their pressure had started dropping already. They had okay. already some of them had normalized within two, three days. So are they very strict when they do that? Do they cut out all salt, cut out all sugar? No, they didn't cut out all salt because we don't mm -hmm. think that the salt of the diet is necessary. We just encourage people to use salt in the proper way and the right type of salt. I'm not talking about table salt. Um, but, um, but they were very strict and they were, um, they were consistent. They were consistent, which is very, very important. And we saw results happening very, very quickly. Okay, thank you. Thank you for unmuting and letting us know that. Um, I, I could ask you more questions, but I'll give somebody else the opportunity. Um, Louise, Sorry, did Sharon. you have a... Yes. Sorry, Sharon. Um, some lady, Jen, I, I, if I'm saying it right, Jenda? Jada. Yeah, she can't get in. She's having trouble getting in. Okay. If there are others on the admin team, if you could look into that. Um, I've just tried to let her in just now. Sorry um, for that. That's okay. Is there yeah. is there anybody that's got a hand up in the chat that would like to, um, or are there any comments in the chat, Louise, about the challenge last week's? Mm. Oh, Daniel, Daniel, you've got a hand up. Daniel McQueen, yeah. are you related to Louise? I think so. We're not sure yet. <laughs> I think so. Somewhere <laughs> <down here. laughs> okay. Yeah, we're going to start this all within me and um, I've been. To see where right. we're coming yeah, yeah. I um I listening every week. I'm there. Um, I don't say much. I, I listen and I start this. Uh, I tried the test last week. I didn't start it from um Sunday, so I started about Tuesday. But my blood pressure. I'm a blood pressure sufferer for about 25 years. I've been on blood pressure tablets. I'm a cancer sufferer for 20 years, mm. and so I did a test with the um, the, uh, the blood pressure. And within two days, it came down. It normally reads high, because even if I go to the doctors, somebody says, I should sit down, let them take it at a second time, because it's always high. And I took it, and it read um, two days after, it was 134 over 77. In two yeah. days. And, and that's, that was, go on. You're going to add something? I was going to say, what did you do to lower the blood pressure then? I take the, the, the China one, the, the celery, the ah. garlic, the tomato, and the, and the uh, oh, what's the next one? Garlic, celery, tomato. Beetroot. Beetroot. I do that one. And first I thought it was going to something taste hard, but it doesn't. It's quite pleasant <laughs> to drink. <laughs> it's not bad at all. Yeah. But what I did, I have got, I, well, I gave away my juice, huh? And next door neighbor didn't have one. Oh. And I have a blend of juice, so I gave her my, my juice. Huh? So I blend it. And um, squeeze, you know, strain it through. And it's very, very comfortable to drink. But I'm, I'm pleased of what I see so far. What I was going to ask the doctor, the, the lady who talked about it, when I come off the tablets, right, I, I still take two tablets a day. How long, do, when I come off the tablets, do I still keep taking the, the drink? I love to take some to keep. Right. The so, Daniel, what you'll need to do is to liaise with um, Lucille on a one-to-one, -one, so you'll yeah. need to get her number. If anybody, if Lucille's on here, that's great. She could um, message you. I can give her a mind number. You can have mind number if you want. You can, she can, can get me. Okay, don't, don't, don't tell us your number live, because remember, this is going all around the world on YouTube. No, no, so, no, no, no. I know what code ones and what not to answer. <laughs> Believe me. 
they've tried. I've got so many calls. <laughs> as I look at it, no, not, not, I just, I just ignore them. Yeah, yeah, I've got a lot of them. Hi, Daniel. Sorry. Hi, it's Lucy from Manor House. Yes, She's Lucy. on here now. Yes, I'm. I'm here listening to your fantastic testimony. That's oh, it's brilliant. I, 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 it really surprised me the way it came out quick because it always read in the in the figure like say. 180, 190 over um, uh, 50, no, oh, no, o over, o no, no, over something like say 80, 90, sometimes 110 over 95. That's that's the figures I'm dealing with all along through. So when it comes down to this in two days, I was quite pleased and surprised. And I took it again. And the next I took it yesterday. It was one three four over seventy five, with its maintaining it, and that's that's I'm very pleased to hear that. But I was saying I don't know <clears throat> when I come off the tablets, do I have to still take the drink to keep to keep it under on, on, on control? Now the thing the thing that you need to do really is have a separate consultation. We don't have these sort of public consultations where everyone is listening. Okay, listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Best okay. thing to do, I put my number into in the chat. Yeah. Um, it's there. It's uh, it's available for anyone. Um, yeah. so, so do contact me. Okay. Okay, listen, I will do. I yeah. definitely will. But congratulations! That is brilliant. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm so pleased. It surprised me to be honest. Really surprised myself to see it came down so quickly. So, yeah, Daniel, did you take the um, drink once a day or once a day, in I, the mornings? Just a once glass? Once a morning. I, I do a whole cell relief. I need a, a, a large tomato, um, a large... Um, what's it? Yeah. But when I, when I blend out everything, it becomes about 500 ml. The amount that gets out. And I drink that one. I just drink that in one go. If Amazing. I yeah, Amazing. I drink it in one go. So I just drink it once a day, and I know I normally drink it in the mornings, and that's it. Yeah. And okay. Do, do Fantastic, that. Daniel. That's really good. Um, I'm so pleased for you. I really am. So pleased. Whereabouts do you live? Which, which sorry, I, do, I don't need your address, but oh, are you I, in I the are you in the UK? Oh yeah, I'm in Wembley. Oh okay, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not far from your church in Wembley. Okay. In this branch and I'm not far from them. Yeah. Marvelous, marvelous. Okay. I'm so pleased because you were brave enough to come on and un unmute that I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to send you uh, an essential oil. So I'm going to let you choose. You can either have lemon or peppermint. There's peppermint. the lemon, lemon yeah. or the peppermint. Which do you think best? Uh, it's entirely up to you. You can choose. Yeah, I I, I take a lemon. You'll yes. take the lemon. Okay. Yeah. So what yes. I'll what I'll need is I will need your address. But um, if if you send me a message in the chat just with your yeah. number, yeah. In the if you can text if you know do you know how to get into the chat? Right now to do that. He's very, she's very good at that. I just call her and say look. Yeah. If you can if, if you can send a message directly to Sharon Wallace. Then I'll get your number and then I'll get your details. Louise, were okay. you gonna say something? Okay. Alvin's got his details. Alvin's got your details anyway. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Is there anybody else? Um that that, that was I'm not saying everybody's gonna get one, it's because he was the first one. Okay. Um <laughs> is, there, is there anybody else that would like to unmute and tell us how they got on with the challenge? We've got maybe two minutes. I don't see anybody or hear anyone. Okay, uh, I could tell you for myself. Ooh, here we go. I, I used to have low, reasonably lowish blood pressure, and then I had children, and then it became normal. And I thought, okay, I'm fine, but I'm going to do the challenge anyway. You know, hey, why not? Um, bought the blood pressure monitor, and I was surprised. Now, last week, Lucille said, for every 10 people that know they have blood, high blood pressure, there's probably seven that don't. And unfortunately, I was amongst that seven. So I had took the challenge, went for the beetroot and the, and the garlic and the tomato and the celery. And I didn't find it as easy as Daniel. Daniel said it tasted nice, <laughs> not so for me. I did not like it at all. 
but I know that medicine is not about the taste, it's about what it does for your body. But I did have to call up Lucille because I struggled to drink that thing. Um, <laughs> I have not seen the results yet that I would like to see. Maybe I'm not as strict with, I don't know, I need to drink more water. I have been drinking more water. In fact, I've got some right here. I've been drinking more water. So I'm praying and I will continue because I know that it can work. And thank you, Daniel, you, you've encouraged me with your testimony. Okay, so for those of you who missed, sorry, for those of you who missed it, you can watch it again next week. Um, watch it again on YouTube, but just to remind you, the re recipe is one tomato, um, celery, beetroot, juice that all, and then in the blender, put some garlic, three cloves of garlic. And that's why I found it tough, because it was three cloves. Okay. <laughs> right. And if somebody can add Ronika to the women's group, that would be great. Oh, sorry. Just a direct message. Um, <laughs> before we go over to Lewis, who's going to give us our presentation and a testimony from Natalia, can I, I would just like to read the disclaimer which we are going to get on the on the screen. So I'm just waiting for my husband to sh share his screen. While we're waiting for that, um, just to let you know, if those of you who are coming in late, so today's presentation, if you didn't know from the poster, is on true temperance. Part two. Okay. So, the disclaimer for today, only a physician can diagnose, treat, and prescribe for illnesses or disease. Any information that we discuss or disclose on this two, TTI Zoom talk show is for educational and for information only. Please continue to seek professional medical advice from your general practitioner regarding any illness or disease that you may be suffering from. Thank you. Okay, so um, before we go into today's talk, presentation, I'd like to invite Natalia Harris to share a testimony with us. And then after Natalia, the next voice you'll hear will be her husband, Lewis Harris. Hi, yes, Sharon. Thank you. Hi, yeah. Natalia. Um, I don't know why, but I feel a little bit nervous for some reason. <laughs> um, I just I had to come and share something with you guys today because um, in regards to like the word self-control or um, temperance, I always struggled with that because um, from a young age, um, I grew up just like indulging in whatever I wanted. So I'd eat like, loads of pasta because I loved pasta to where my belly just went like rock hard or I would literally like in my teen years sorry Natalia we've lost you can you hear me now yeah, yeah we can hear you we got up to in your teen years yeah in my teen years um I ended up yeah drinking a lot of um, energy drinks if you knew me years ago I was just so I was a little bit like I was on drugs I was just so hyperactive all the time yeah and now when I'm learning I'm realizing it's all those fizzy drinks I was drinking especially the the Red Bull and the Boost but anyway this became more of a problem as I got older because um I started smoking um, and that became my coping mechanism for whenever I became stressed I'd um, be smoking and when I got to know God, like properly for myself and understand what God's purpose was for me in my life, it was quite a painful proce progress, process because I was thinking like, what, like you would prefer me to not smoke anymore. You'd prefer me to not go out getting drunk. With so many things like in the word, like realizing what God's purpose was for me, like to give me health and that I may prosper. Like 
in every way, in health and in everything. And what I'm trying to say, guys, is um, it's still a process. Don't get me wrong. There are things that I have put away. But I just wanted to just come in and encourage someone today just to say, like, try not to look at self-control or health as a hard thing or a negative thing. All these things all come with great benefits. Like, for me, personally, like, when I first stopped um, wearing, like, the amount of makeup that I was wearing, I went for a really, like, um, challenging time where um, I used to feel so insecure and unconfident in how I actually looked. Um, and by God's grace, my skin has improved dramatically. Um, I used to think I'd never be able to go out without makeup on. Now I can, by God's grace. So God is so good by drinking water, by um, using natural products, by exercising, by eating much better. Guys, I used to eat KFC all the time. Like, no, if you knew me from years ago, KFC was like the best thing ever. Like, it, it, it's not really a struggle anymore, but yeah, anyway, it was really, really hard for me. But by God's grace, like I prayed and it changed my taste buds. Now I'm eating a lot more better than what I was. And it's just a process, literally. It's um one step at a time and it's a journey. It's a journey to better health. And yeah, I just wanted to just come and share this because, you know, with the last um, temperance presentation was talking about harmful things and good things. And looking back, like yesterday, I was thinking to myself, gosh, like, God, you've really taken me a long way from where I was. Like a lot of my family members and friends are like, oh, I didn't recognize you or you've changed so much. But I have to just literally give all the glory to God because it's him that's changed me for the better. And not only for me, but for other people, I'm able to give others advice now who are struggling with certain things like food or if they want to make their skin look a bit better or um, embrace their own hair. There's just so many stuff, but I hope that this is encourage someone out there it was just a little piece but that's all I really had to say today guys I hope you enjoyed the rest of the presentation bye for now thank you so much Natalia that was very encouraging and I'm sure somebody else was encouraged by what you said okay so we'll now invite Lewis Harris to unmute and share a message for Hello. you. Hi everyone, good luck. Um, today we're gonna to continue to temperance part two. Um, we went through part one and that was dealing many of the physical aspects of, um, of elf and also of temperance. So I'm gonna share my screen now. I'm just gonna have a brief overview of the last time because I know some of you wasn't there and it's been a couple of weeks and we can get into it. Right. Um, so that's, so the first um, part one was, was to do with um, understanding that there's a lot of physical and spiritual diseases out in the world. And we know we're in a time period of a pandemic um, and we know that there's been a lot of physical elements, people have been scared and it's just been worked and of um, temperance would, would be a savior of life unto life for those who um, were very intemperate in their habits because it's in all things. So temperance is very key. And what we established also that the foundation of temperance um, is based on um, abstaining from all that's harmful and using judiciously that which is good. So perfect health requires absolute temperance. So in order for us to have perfect health, whether that be spiritual, mental, um, even social, physical health, we must... Um, absolute temperance and 
we identify the absolute tendencies that abstain from all things that's harmful and using moderately that which is good. So the question last time was, uh, where do we start? And we start at our, our, our food. So it says, hunger is the first element of self-discipline. If you can control what you eat and else. So this is where we left off. I'm going to carry on from understanding that we, we established that there is, that we must learn to control what we eat and what we drink. Because that's the that's the foundation, guys. The foundation of um, of of being temperate in all things. That's the foundation of the bear. That's the foundation of our actions, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions. Our it turns into blood, and that blood will have an effect upon every part of our body, and especially especially the brain. So we are went through choices. What choices we all um, got choices every day to make, whether it be for good, whether it be for ill, whether it be for life, or whether it be for death, right? So choices is something that we make every day. So just want to skip down to um, the, last, the last time we established some principles of how to eat, um, principles of eating, um, how to eat, when to eat, and that would help us to be, and we also um, established foods of intemperance so example of um, the main um, ingredients of intemperance when it comes to our um, food and our, our diet. And we've got a lot. Let me see. So this list just kind of lists um, everything that we should try to avoid completely. And just a triangle of um, just an example of things that we shouldn't eat. And last time we established well, the raw food pyramid was brilliant because it kind of gives you a good um a good understanding of what um what what are actually temperate foods we see there's a lot of green a lot of color a lot of life she comes from a seed originally so and we know that within a seed is also is 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 the formula for life you plant the seed and it grows so and these foods will give you growth so it's the ones you plant in life within you so that's what we established the last time. So we're gonna jump to tooth temperance part two. So temperance, the foundation of intemperance is erroneous eating and drinking results in erroneous thinking and action. That's taken from a book called Councils on Diet and Food. And this will impact the the spirit, the, the, the physical will impact the mental, the mental impacts the spirit. As you can see in this diagram, right? You can see there's a knock on effect that all needs to work together, all work in unison to one another. And just to establish this, that what we eat and drink turns into blood. That blood goes throughout the body, including the, to the brain. The quality of that blood in the brain will have a positive or negative effect upon the brain. Where and where that's where our fall. Our actions oh, are formed, you, right? So that we make in our life. Determine Lewis. where we determine what choices we make to go left. Yeah. Sorry, Lewis, can you yeah. just go back can you and hear me? say what you said at the beginning of the slide? Because we lost you. The signal this wasn't too from this slide. This so. Okay, so um I'm just going through the um the transition of what happens when you eat and drink temperately or intemperately. And this is um, just a little diagram just to show everyone, um, just an example of how the food can impact um, what happens mentally to us. So example, like what we eat and drink turns into blood, right? So that food turns into blood. And so whether that food is something good or it's something bad, um, that will still have an impact upon the brain. And that the quality of that blood that's taken from our stomachs and throughout our body that, that goes to the brain, which 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 is the, the the area where our thoughts, our mood, and our actions are formed. And our thoughts, action, and mood will then determine our character and what we do morally. So when so when we eat certain type of foods, what I'm trying to say it will affect us in it will have an impact in our morality whether it be for good, whether it be for bad, it has an impact in our choices. For example, just a simple example, like when we drink alcohol, for example, when, when someone is drunk, 
when we have too much consumption of that 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 particular drink what it does you 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 cannot function the same you can't even drive properly without being an hazard to your fellow human being so we see that that food blood that goes to the brain and sends the brain off so ex so that's one one example of how the food can affect our brain so what are we say so not not necessarily alcohol but to be any type of quality of food, whether it be good food or bad food, that will have a positive or negative effect, which have a knock-on effect upon one's character. And that, that's what we established the last time. So being intemperate violates the health law. And we know the health law that we promote is new start. So we have nutrition, we have exercise, we have water, we have sunshine, we have temperance, which we're talking about right now, we have fresh air, we have rest, and we have trust in God. So they're the health laws that we abide by. That whether we know it or not, whether we um, believe in these laws or not, these laws are embodied within our human organism. We cannot um, ignore them because when we ignore them, then we breed, we will ultimately breed disease and death. So we realize that being intemperate will violate these laws. Violating the health laws, which is new start, leads to a mental, physical, spiritual, and social problems. So when we violate the, when we intemperate in whatever way, it will impact us. Um, in every way, mentally, physically, spiritually, and socially. It impacts society, it impacts you as an individual, it impacts your family, and, and this is why temperance is so important. This will lead to all problems of society, from murder, rape, blind, stealing, adultery, suicide, depression, etc. All the ills in society, the foundation is found in, in temperance. And ultimately, when we go back anciently, now where do, where do we find morals ultimately from? We find ultimately from that book that good book, the Bible. And that book brings out something called the Ten Commandments. I know, I know all are not believers on the platform. What I'm trying to say is that we see that there's a, there's a, there's a very delicate cohesion between um, the, the physical man and the mental man. And when we violate one, we ultimately will violate the other. And this goes back from ancient times. And this is where we get the Ten Commandments. So just a brief... I guess you all know the Ten Commandments. It says, you shall have no other gods, you shall have no idols, you shall, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain, keep the Sabbath day holy, honor your father and your mother, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness or lie, you shall not covet. These, this is a moral law, but when we become intemperate, we only violate all these laws. We see that because of intemperance now eating and drinking, it can lead to murder, it can lead to adultery, it can lead to stealing, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We said there's a complete connection between the, the, the physical man and the mental man. So um, what does what does intemperance look like? For example, it looks like we've got anger, we have arrogance and pride, we have envy, we have gluttony, we have greed, we have loss, we have slothfulness, we have a use of time, dress, and scene. And just to um, emphasize what I mean by seeing I mean that like overuse of watching certain programs example for example we know we established that that true temperance is discarding anything that's harmful to one right and using um judiciously that which is good so therefore when we're looking at scenes so example so for example let's um take a, a movie that's got a lot of violence for example did you know that that actually have, when you watch violent movies or any movies, anything that you watch on TV, your body does not know that it's not real. Your brain cannot determine whether that's actually happening for real or is actually fake, it's just a TV program. So when we indulge ourselves upon things that are negative or things that are overly stimulating on the TV, what we're doing, what we're doing is that we're causing harm to our bodies. Our body's reacting as if we're actually doing the very act itself. So, for example, so if one's seen a lot of, like we see a lot of example when kids play a lot of video games, right? Violent video games. A lot of time we hear kids going out and murder other kids, school shootings, et cetera. Why do you think this is? Because they're, they're at intemperate seeing. They're, they're obsessed with video games, obsessed with violent video games, and, they, and their body took it as, the, and their brain took it, internalized it as this is, this is what um, I've, I've just done. This has an impact on his character. And the brain now is wired in a way that it wants to do that very act that it's seen on the screen. That's what I mean about seeing. Dressing, just to make it a bit more plain, dressing. One can dress for health and one can dress for destruction. For example, in the summertime, there's a way to 
dress, right? In the winter time, there's a way to dress. If you use summer clothing in the winter, what do you think will happen to your body? Perfect, perfect health requires perfect circulation. So it, there's a fashion nowadays that um, speaks about a lot of women wearing um, just ripped up jeans, not women, but men as well, ripped jeans, right? So all their, their, um, all their legs are exposed to the cold, chilling winter. And that puts, that's a knock-on effect upon all the other organs in your body. And there's also um, like the skinny jeans, for example, right? And the skinny jeans is so tight, the body cannot function, like you can't move properly. The limbs are constricted once again. Almost like that put more pressure upon the body to have perfect circulation. So these are ways that we don't understand that these bad habits or these intemperate habits will cause problems in the long run. So we're just gonna break it down a bit more, take you through out just for an example to show you exactly temperance is a very large subject and it and it's it composed of every area of your life. And it's important that we um, take eat to it because even if we eat and write, we still need to take care of the other side of temperance. Now, how am I using my time? How am I using my finance? How am I treating my fellow men? These, all these things in corporate temperance. Uh, can I control my anger? How's my pride, my arrogancy, my envy? Are these things part of, do we struggle with these things? Are, are these things something that we need to be, be um, also mindful of? <clears throat> so we take the first ones, thou shall not kill. Let's talk about anger. Thou shall not kill. And this is from taken 2017. This is actually um, from the global burden of disease, right? This is taken, this is official statistics, sorry. And you can see um, in 2017 that the top killer was <coughs> cardiovascular disease, right? 1.26 million people, right? 1.26 million people. And, and see, majority of them, um, the killers or the physical disease, right? So we once we establish that intemperance in eating and drinking leads to everything. So we know that our lifestyle and our diet have a very big impact upon our physical our physical man, which we see with this disease. We've got cancers at 1 million, 0.5, we got HIV, we have road accidents. That's a big killer. You can see 669,000 people die yearly um, um, in road accidents digestive problems but i want you to take an um, example we see suicide suicide right suicide rates are pretty skyrocket right now due to the pandemic but back in 2017 it was already high as well at 453,000 people take their life um <clears throat> a year over suicide then once again i want to i see my arrows at homicide now we start point homicide because i found this kind of startled in that um, mankind we're just killing each other that way. So this homicide, I don't know what homicide is that is me killing my brother or my sister, etc. cetera. So um, homicide has been having a steady increase. And we see that there is, these are moral issues which are causing death of our fellow human being. And what we do establish, we already established that how we eat and drink will determine our thoughts on action. Our thoughts on action will also determine our character, and that will determine our choices we make in life. So all points back now, can we see a steady um, understanding that, look, we have um, intemperate diseases, we have also, and we also have moral diseases, like homicide, suicide, et cetera, and these need to be addressed. And sometimes these are on the look, so we have a high percentage right here, and see homicide is terrible and it's increasing as the years roll by. <clears throat> so it stays more than 400,000 people from homicide each year. Yeah, more than 400 people die from homicide each year. Homicide is a large killer globally, right? Homicide, can you imagine? Homicide is a large killer. So, so people are not making right choices. The question is why? Why are you managing to making right choices? Why not making right choices? In some countries, it's one of the leading cause of death. Imagine that homicide is a leading cause of death in, in some countries. The global burden of disease is a major Study on the cases of causes of the death and disease published. The study estimates of estimate the annual number of deaths caused as shown there. I can see it above. So this is the graph is showing the graph. Um, I can see up there. That's so this study 
is an annual study that they do. I'm not sure what the study says this year, but that, that was back in 2017. So I'm just going to move this. I can't see all the screen. Let's see. Right. You say just over 400,000 people died from homicide in 2017. This is around the times number of killed in armed conflict and terrorism combined. So this is this was around three times the number of killed in what armed conflict and terrorism combined. So homicide is even even beating um, armed conflict and terrorism. So this is an issue. This is the issue that humanity faces. This is the issue that we face it. We face and face this. We know that in the UK, the knife crime, um, I believe in 2019 and at the beginning of 2020, was terrible. The knife crime in London was terrible. And the truth is, why young people make so many bad choices? Why are people making such bad choices um, against their fellow men? So in some countries, homicide is one of the largest killers. Homicide rates across some countries in Latin America are particularly high. In 2017, homicide was the third largest cause of the deep in Venezuela, fourth in Honduras, and the fifth in Guatemala. So these countries like Venezuela and Honduras are having a lot of social unrest, and we see a lot of homicide rates are off the roof. These people, are their mindsets are, are in that condition that they cannot make rational choices. They cannot love their brothers. They don't see each other as brothers and sisters anymore, but they see each other as enemies. The question is, are we come to this point in humanity that, that the world becomes so intemperate? Even nowadays, um, I'm, I'm sure everyone heard about that um, that show called Man vs. Food, right? And that show it just basically shows the indulgence of food, how much food is in the world. And, and, and this guy basically competes to see how much, how much food he can eat at one time. So it shows that the that the, the world is... The world's getting more easy access to um, food. We have much more access to food. And the results is, it seems that also our world has become much more demoralized. We have a lot more food, a lot more freedom in what we do. But at the same time, it seems that we have much more destruction. So anger. And, and the good book says, Psalms 37 verse 8 says, Cease from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not thyself. Verse one: A soft answer turned to be wrath, but previous words stir up anger. And Proverbs twenty-seven verse four says, "Wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous, but who is able to stand before envy?" So you see, even the Bible in ancient times have told us that cease from anger, forsake wrath, fret not thyself. And a soft answer turned to be wrath. So the Bible gives us counsel that when we have uncontrollable anger, it will lead to destruction. It will lead to it leads to evil. It leads to um, we persecuting each other, and this is what we see in the world currently. We see with with all the gang warfare, we see with um, with the racism, we see all of these things are boiled down to anger against each other, a lack of love towards humanity. It boils down to ultimately how we control what we eat and drink, and these things will have a banging effect upon our children and upon our children's children as well. So the, the novel um, topic I'm getting to is thou shall not commit adultery, sexual loss. And I picked these two, and I picked this one because as the years go by, it's almost every advert, every um, even and, and advertise, advertisements seem to be um, always to appeal to human beings' sexual nature. The world is hypersexual right now. And the question is, why is the world become hypersexual? Why are we in this in this situation that we cannot we cannot um control our desires, our sexual desires as we once did? So, example for an issue with um this is like pornography, for example. All right, pornography is a big issue. And did you know since the pandemic as well, um certain pornographic sites have gone over the roof with the views. So it's a, it shows that there's an issue in humanity with our self-control. It shows that we're very intemperate in a lot of things, not just what we eat and drink. But we see that what we eat, eat and drink will lead on to other things, as we can see with the violence in humanity. Uh, like we know last year, we had a Black Lives Matter protest. We know that George Floyd got killed by a police officer, for example. We see the violence on a daily basis, the, the violence in the video games, the violence in the TV, the violence on our streets. It's almost like we become so used to it. It's like, oh, where life used to be this this our life is but it shows that the question is no no one's asking the question as our diet has something to do with this does um 
does our plates, our appetite, our temperance, as that has, has to anything to do with the evils what's happening in this world. No politician is addressing these problems. And this is why it's such an issue in, in our world right now. So recent studies, for example, shown with pornography, for example, this is something that many of us are ashamed of, many of us struggle with. <clears throat> but we're here to, for education, guys, not to condemn anyone, right? So 12% of all internet websites are pornographic. That's kind of starting to me off. 12% of all internet search websites are, porn are pornographic. 25% of all online search engines requests are related to sex. 25%. That's about 68 million requests per day, right? 35% of all internet downloads are pornographic. 40 million Americans are regular visitors in their own estimates into porn sites. <clears throat> I don't know, this is some, some this is, is, is based on America, but it's just an example of what's happening in the world, world um, all, all over, that we are struggling to control ourselves in many ways, not just one. Right, and I can't see the top of that thing, so let me, let me just come back to this. Space. Right, yeah, so we see that, um, no percentage up there, that 70%. Let's give me a second, guys. Let me see if I can move that. Okay, I can't. Yeah, so okay, it says Avid is the first expert to internet porn is 11, right? 11 years old. Imagine 11 years old is where obviously we for a lot of our young people are exposed to, to this type of um, um, garbage, right? So think about it now. If now, imagine if our young people already have a terrible diet, they're, they're already not thinking properly. They, they fall into pornography, which then have another knock-on effect. And, and this is why it becomes a downward spiral. And they play a lot of violent video games. Their character will be so changed, so molded into um, what society is giving them through the intemperate diet, through the intemperate seeing, through the intemperate video games and everything else that comes with it. And their character will be formed in a way that will not be very useful to the fellow men. And rather we becoming our brother's keepers, we become each other's enemies through what we're exposed to. And the largest consumer group of internet porn is men aged between, sorry, oh, 35 and 49. That's the largest consumer group of internet users, right? Of, of porn, ages 35 and 49. So one third of all internet porn users are female. The most popular day of the week for watching porn is Sunday. Now that's interesting. That's what's interesting. I don't even know why that is. They don't, they don't really say why, but that's very interesting. The most popular day of the week for watching porn is Sunday. Mostly because we can. Don't know. And in America now, the most popular day for the year for watching porn is Thanksgiving. Imagine that now. Think about it, guys. Thanksgiving. You eat a lot, you drink a lot, and you and you merry make a lot, right? So once again, we see the eating and drinking leads to what? Bad choices. These bad choices are not good because these bad choices are leading us um, in, in some bad places. Because imagine Thanksgiving, they celebrate family and come together. People are indulging too much in what they're eating and drinking, which are obviously not the right stuff, which lead them on to watch more pornography on that day. So, so that alone proves that you can see that what we eat and drink, that erroneous thinking, eating and drinking will lead to erroneous thoughts and actions. Remember, the thoughts comes first before the actions follow. Like we say, it's a downward spiral. As we continue to indulge intemperately, we will our be formed likewise. So what we eat, so now every time you eat a plate of food, remember, ask yourself, what will it do to my character? How will this make me think? How will I feel? How will I control my frustration by what I eat? How will I control my anger today by what I'm eating? How will I control my thought patterns? And if your mind has struggled with loss, like with that pornography, I'll suggest you get on a Daniel diet. And these are the questions we have to be asking ourselves. How will these things impact us in the long run? But, a lot, but of course, we don't naturally think that what I eat will then determine what action I make in, in two hours' time. We don't think that, do we? But everything has a domino effect, guys. So it's very, um, be very mindful of what you put in your plate and what you put in your mouth nowadays. So 
we see now that's 68, 68 top sex ter sorry, therapists in the United Kingdom, the UK, of them, yeah, of them, as in, as in the, as in um, these, these therapists together, they said about 86% felt that, that the porn earth their relationship. So porn's earth and peace relationship, guys. Porn is earth and peace relationship, right? And 90% have seen an increase in relationship troubles due to porn use. So this loss in the long run is not helping us. It's destroying our relationship between men and women. It's destroying our, our families. It's destroying our um, young people and the older people and our marriages. It's not doing good for us at all. Most sex therapists also said that porn increases men's expectation of sex with their partner, while porn has a negative effect on women's sexual confidence. These effects can lead to performance anxiety and dissatisfaction in both men and women. And it's no wonder that men are more hooked on pornography. And this is one, this is one example of lost guys, right? I'm just using this one example. And this is and this is such a potent um, study that so people thinking that they're doing themselves no harm by watching these things, but these things are destroying and eating away at our brain, eating away at our physical um, man, eating away at um, also our relationships as well i was saying the study also shows that using porn watching pornography can lower the self-esteem of their wives men don't watch pornography and girlfriends infrequent porn use does not negatively impact does not affect marriages or other romantic relationships that's what the the study um um finds but do i I agree with that statement, not really, because the negative impact outweighs the positive impact. So as you can see, they say that if you improve the use it, it's not so bad, in other words. But then it's having a big um, self-esteem problem with, with a lot of women, especially when they especially when they in relationship with um with their partners. So if that's causing um women to lose their, their self-confidence and their self-esteem, to me is it it easily outweighs the any pro that porn will give you. But so, however, the more frequently men view porn, the more insecure and happy their female partners tend to become. So it doesn't, so in the long run, our intemperance when it comes to pornography or whatever lustful um, intemperance we have will lead to destruction, will lead to unhappiness, and it will lead to division. And so there's about now, and the bottom said about 56% of divorce proceedings cite an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. Can you believe that? 56% of divorce. Right, so conditions that frequently occur with pornographic addiction include we have depression, we, we have anxiety, we have social anxiety, we have mood disorders, we have sex addiction, we have substance use disorders we have memory problems smoking and tobacco use we have erectile dysfunction we have relationship breakdown these are some examples of of the results of of overstimulation of um of of us being intemperate in what we see and now we control what's um, what we see so um as the bible say um matthew 5 28 um the wisest teacher, Jesus himself, said, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, have committed adultery with her already in this heart. And this is a potent, and this, this is where it's at pornography, that like, whosoever look at a woman to lust after her, commit adultery. So, so think about, guys, this. You see, before the action actually happens, before you even go type in the pornographic site, or you commit adultery itself, <laughs> Just put that in there. Now. Just put that in there. So if it is, guys, so like, so what that happens is so that we for we first form those thoughts in our mind. Those temperate force, those thoughts come to our mind. That's where it starts. It stops up there. And if we so, but the question is before we even add those thoughts in our mind, what do you do before that? That day we, we must have had something, we must have indulged in something. Right, and that thought internalized into our mind, then it leads out into the action. So another one, Psalms 101, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Can we truly say that? Can we say that? I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. So David is saying there in the Psalms that 
we should we should be mindful not to set no wicked thing before our eyes before even now the same thing you do with what you you drink and eat think about it how will impact me in the in an hour time in two hours time now you consider what you're watching consider what you indulge yourself in are we being temperate are we discarding all that's harmful and using moderately that which is good am i looking at things which are harmful am i discard am i discarding them these things will have an impact upon your moral worth how you treat your fellow man how you treat each other even ultimately your eternal destiny and this is why it's so important that we as individuals whether you're a believer or non-believer it doesn't matter that whatever you eat and drink will lead to your thoughts if your thoughts are in are intemperate as in if you then continue in in that intemperate way of seeing things of doing things that are not temperate it will lead to changes in your character and you start to do things that you never thought possible that you would ever do and if you look back in your life now look back where these seeds were planted at the very beginning. Many of these things start from our childhood and these things have been slowly been growing within us. So just to put it up, it says, thou shall not, but rather love thy neighbor as thyself. If we are the law of God, regardless what society say about the Bible or what men may say, if we are the law of God within our inward, within our minds, within our hearts, we will not see rape. We will not see pornography we will not see masturbation we will not see the lgbtq as that we will not see bestiality we will not see teenage unwanted pregnancy we will not see sexual diseases we will not see sexting strip clubs brothels etc if we add if we if we were temperate in 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 what we indulge in we will also not see the murder we will not see hate as we see we see the racism the oppression, we see slavery, overeating, we see drugs, we see eating bad food and drinks, etc. We see speaking words that destroy others. We see fighting, we see suicide. These things will be avoided if we kept to God's way of being temperate. We won't see fraud. We'll see people um, using people for gain, theft, robbery, stealing affections, etc. We, we will steal, we will steal time from people. Many of us, we have no control of our time. We are late all the time. We don't wake up in time um, to, um, to, we don't place a good time on every, every part we have our day, like even our work patterns. How do we work? Do we work, do we use our, our, our time best to accomplish our goals for, the, for that day? These things will not be so if we had a, very, if we had a temperate lifestyle. And obviously, are, are we temperate with what we say to people? Gossiping, exaggeration, telling white lies. I put makeup because obviously, um, people that is that is the lie. When we put this stuff on our face, put this stuff on our ear, etc., which can always, which can, which can appear as something that we're not. We're talking lying to protect people's feelings, all in back the truth. These things will not be sold if we had a good foundation of where we started, and that foundation, the very foundation. Of eating and drinking that foundation is what we allow ourselves to indulge in to indulge in that which is good or, we, or in that which is evil so the true foundation lies in how we um how we eat and drink and that will internalize every part of our lives guys and it's important that we understand this that these evils that we see none of us probably none of us agree with these things right you know none of us agree with these things these things that you no, no one will see anyone get killed. We don't see racism. We don't want to see suicide. We don't want to see um, sexual diseases and all these things that will cause pain to, to one another. But the reason why we see these things because the world at large is intemperate and our TVs and our advertisements and what the world promotes in our education, it promotes indulgence. It, to, it promotes one to, to, um, to be prideful, to think he's better than his fellow men. It promotes a very intemperate lifestyle. And this is why it's so sad that because the, the law of God is not within our inward parts, not within our minds or within our hearts. Because, because men have rejected God, they are now reaping the results of the rejection. And this is where intemperance, this is the way the intemperance lie. The man thinking is wise in his own eyes. So my instruction to you guys is to consider the two greatest commandments, right? True happiness and true temperance can only be accomplished by a power source beyond our humanity. 
because for years now, for, for the last 6,000 years, the world's gotten worse, right? There's more murder, there's more crime, there's more fraud, there's more unhappiness in general as a society, there's more pandemics, as you can see right now, there's more disease in this world. And where, and it all lies down to one thing, that we, don't, we do not love God and we don't love our neighbors ourselves. We do not love God, we do not love our neighbors ourselves. So I'm, so I'm saying that in order for us to accomplish true temperance, we cannot do it in our own strength. So what I've taught you today that these things are, we all struggle with, with one of these things. But the question is, can we, cannot do, we cannot overcome our own weakness in our own strength. So the question is, where, where do you put your faith in? Do you put your faith in yourself? Or what I'm saying is that let's put our faith in, in something, something greater than ourselves. Like Mark 10, verse 27 says, Jesus looking upon them said, with men, it is impossible. So I'm telling you guys, what I said to you today, it's impossible for you to change who you are. It's impossible for you to change who you are. Yes, you can start making change in your lifestyle, starting with your diet. Brilliant. But it will take, it will take a, a power, a will stronger than yours to change the character. It will take a, a will stronger than yours. Listen to me, K, if it's stronger than your will to change your character. And that's how with men, it's impossible, but not with God, but with God, all things are possible. So this is the hope that all things are possible. If, so once, so when you're putting, when you, um, if you're not someone that have faith in God, I'm telling you today, give God a chance, give him a go. He will prove to you that he's faithful and that he's true. And my encouragement is the gospel Bible is a wonderful simplifier of life's problems. This is a problem. We know that we all face some of these problems. I struggle with, 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 with a lot of these pro problems. Many young people like myself, we've seen pornography. We've been through that. We know a lot of these things. We struggle with drug smoking, drinking. We struggle with controlling our appetites. We, we struggle with our timing. We struggle with um, saying kind words to each other. We struggle with being friendly to one another. We struggle to even respect our fellow men. As, human, as humans, we had slavery for many years. We struggle with these things, right? But the gospel is the simplifier of these things. You have a problem? Go to the Bible, guys. Like it says, read me, read me, and I will give you wisdom. For, for the Bible says, I am wisdom, I have understanding. And this instruction needed would make plain many a perplexity and save us from many an error. It teaches us to estimate things at their true value, guys, yeah? So, like, what is a what is matter like like some some of us are eating and drinking that is life it's not if we couldn't eat and drink life is not worth living that's that's some that's our attitude certain towards um when it comes to um what we're eating and drinking or how we dress some people we put value in the things that doesn't matter but the things that do matter is how we treat our fellow men how do we treat our our husbands and our wives how do we treat our children how do we treat one another as 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 humanity why why there's so much homicide why there's so much suicide why there's so much rape and fraud and poverty why there's so much of these things that's the question of that and the question is what are we doing to 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 better this world what are we doing to be um, value to our fellow citizens we are here to serve each other guys we are we have, we've been taught in a way to be selfish to be prideful to be arrogant to be egotistic. But the Bible is calling us to repentance and say that we need to let those things go. We need to, we need to go and simplify our lives. But I'll carry on. It says, it teaches us to estimate things that they've true value to give most effort to the things of greatest worth. What are the things, the things that will endure? The things that will endure. So my challenge for this week, my challenge, my challenge, my challenge, before we get into any questions, any comments, my challenges, guys, please, uh, is an invitation. Uh, join TTI every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on our Bible studies. And this is all was, whether you're atheist, agnostic, if, you, um, if you're a Muslim, a non-believer, whatever you are, I want you to join us at 7 o'clock. Join us, right? So everyone on this platform that's on right now wants to join us at 7 p.m. That is my challenge to you this week, right? Because, like I say, like we need to understand that they, what are the real value of things? We can't do, we can't do this by ourselves. We need something better and greater than ourselves. And, and by God's grace, you will see if you come to the Bible studies that 
this is what we're teaching. And also, every day, starting from tomorrow, I want to acknowledge your intemperance. So whatever intemperance is, don't let, you don't have to you don't have to tell me or tell anyone. You acknowledge it, whether it be pornography, whether it be masturbation, whether it be um, overeating, or can't control your time, sleeping too late. We know um, Sister John spoke about um, not sleeping properly the other week, how it impacts your, 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 your health. Any, if, if it's, um, you, you, you can't control your finance, et cetera, or your anger, or you're prideful, or you, are you easily frustrated, et cetera. Whatever your intemperance is, yeah? I want to acknowledge it. Acknowledge it. Don't um, pretend like it's not there. Acknowledge it, right? At the start of each day, and I actively address them daily. So actively say, that, okay, I know, for example, myself, for myself, for example, I used to be a um, son that, for um, example. So I, I was very conscious that things can fly me off. So I just, my first, I have to spend some time in devotion, praying, and reading the word, going back to the, Go back to the manual and say like, okay, Lord, I struggle with anger. I cannot control my anger. Like if someone caught me off in the traffic, I'm ready to have a road rage example, right? So if you know this is you, like how I used to be, then you actively address that problem. Seek help, whether it be um, even having like a accountability partner. Say, okay, like, I struggle with example, like anger. So if you see me fly off the rail, on to rule me in or every day or every couple of days on my accountability partner that's me how's it been this week how do you control your anger how do you control your your um lust how do you control these things and that way it makes you more aware of that okay yeah i need to control this i need to i need to have more control of what i'm doing but remember this is temperance part two so when we combine part one with a chance of part two then is you will have a much um a much potent better chance of overcoming your intemperance. So part one was how to eat and what to eat, right? And part two now is to join us now through a spiritual journey to, to receive that power, that power to help you to overcome, right? And also to acknowledge that you're intemperate. Acknowledge that, yeah, this is me. I've got a problem. I'm ready to kill if someone curse me out. I want you to lie about that person just to get a better job or lie my application form to get promoted, et cetera. This is me. And when we come to that point that we can acknowledge these things, then we can have a better chance of becoming temperate people. Thank you uh, for listening. Lewis? Hello, hi Sharon. Thank you so much. That was really, really, really interesting. Um, had, I, I've not cut you, have I? You have finished, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I've finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, somebody did ask if it's possible to get the PowerPoint, um, but I, I, I informed them that we do have the recordings. They're there live on YouTube. And they can go back and watch them over again. I'm yeah. not sure if they need it specifically, but if they do, I know this person has, um, we, we have access to them. We have access to the person, they, they join us so, uh, on Tuesday, okay. so that's fine. Um, but yes, so that's a reminder to everybody. If there was bits that you maybe nicked out, you maybe you had to go and have a comfort break or, or somebody was making a bit of noise in the house and you missed a bit, you can always go back onto YouTube and just rewind and share, share, share this information because this is such valuable, valuable information, Lewis. Thank you so much. Um, and just reminding those of you who do come on to the Bible study for part one of the challenge, it's 7 p.m. UK time. Thank you very, very much, Linda. 7 p.m. UK time. So you'll have to look and see which time zone you're in, what time that is going to be for you. Okay. Oh, yeah. so yeah, yes, of course. Um, but, oh, wow. So the, the opportunity now comes for people to ask questions. But remember the disclaimer, okay? It's, um, yes, it's covering spiritual health, physical health, mental health, etc. But we're here to give information. So it's not a personal consultation if you do wish to um, mute. The link for YouTube, if one of the admin can put it in the um, chat, 
that will be useful. And also, if you haven't got it, you know, you've not done the screenshot or you've not been able to locate it from the chat, just go on YouTube and type in True Temperance International and you should be able to locate our uh, presentations. Um, you'll see them all there. This one should be near the top. Um, right, so I've got some questions for you, Lewis, or at least some things to add to complement what you said. Um, but I'll let somebody else have a chance to see if they wish to unmute and ask you a question. I think you stunned everybody into silence, Lewis. Are there any hands? I can't see any hands in the uh, participants' lists. No. Okay. Um, right, so I have a, a point to make actually because in your slides, one, towards the beginning, you were saying that um, intemperate choices that we might make can affect us, impact us mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. But you also went on to say it can affect us personally, which we all know, but our communities and our society can also be infected by the choices that we make. And I'd like to complement that also by saying it can also affect for instance, if, if, you, if a woman is pregnant, the intemperate choices that you make can affect the behavior and the choices of the unborn child that you're carrying. And also, if you're not pregnant, but you have influential people in your house. So for instance, your young children or your young people or your spouse, you know, some of us think, oh, well, you know, I'm an adult, I'm a big man now, nobody's gonna change me, um, but, just by being around people, you can start to assimilate, you know, take on some of their characteristics and behaviours. So it's not just about ourselves, it's about our, our, who, we, who we communicate with, whether it's verbally or um, just by watching. So yeah, that was, that was powerful. Thank you so much. Right, we do have a question in the chat. Let's see what it says. Louise, are you there? Can you pick this one up? Yes, hold on a minute. Um, is it a question? Is there, is there are so many addictions? Why is it when we're praying, it seems the prayers are focused on the drugs and alcohol addictions? And the list you petition is a wide range of things that can be added to our daily prayers. Did you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's more like a comment, um, which is it's true. Well, I think, like I say, we have to acknowledge, and sometimes we pray about alcohol and drug addiction, but we, a lot of times, because it's almost like that's something that a lot of, we say is is an obvious one. It's it's more like it's one, something that um, people obviously want to think about um, in terms of oh yeah, drugs, alcohol, etc. But I think that. Like, like what we understand that true temperance is a, is a variety. It's very large, it's broad. It touches every sphere of our life, not just um, alcohol abuse or drug abuse, but it's in every part. So to um, the person who said that, it's a good comment. Yeah, so we need to um, understand first what, what temperance is and, those, and how temperance can affect our lives. And then our prayers and our petitions will be much more broadened that we realize that every part of our lives is affected by temperance. So that's what I'll say to that. Good answer, Lewis, good answer. Now, when you showed the statistics, I, oh, sorry, there's a hand, yep. Okay, uh, Linda, yes, would you like to unmute and good. ask a question? Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to say thank you um, to to Lois for the presentation. It, it was quite prov thought provoking. I think that's why many of us are probably silent um, because we are just probably thinking about where in our lives do we need still to, to work? Where do we need God to help us? And maybe for some of us who've never thought about the connections between eating, drinking and our physical, mental 
and spiritual health, it's, it's, it's a time to really explore. And um, I really think it is a, I'm going to call it a message. I really think it is a message that the world really needs now because we are living in a time where, where, where sin is okay, if I can call it that, where, or maybe I should put it as um, where weaknesses are okay. We are told to embrace our flaws, be one with our imperfections. Um, we don't need to be overcomers anymore. You know, we, we don't need to overcome things that, that weigh us down. We don't need to find a way to become better. In, instead, we, we kind of like keep these, and, uh, these weaknesses um, and, and failures in our character and we pamper them and we comfort them like some treasured part of our beings. And what I found from, from, from this presentation is that that is not the standing that we need to take in our lives. That is actually adverse to what um, true temperance really is. It's, it's, we, we need to overcome. We need to understand, yes, this is where I'm in temperance. How can I become better? Um, and I think many of the ills that we have, we wouldn't have to face. We, we wouldn't be facing um, instances like I remember watching something um, a couple of months ago where it said we need to start um, accepting pedophiles because that's just the way in which they express their sexual orientation. I mean, pedophilia cannot be a sexual orientation, you know, and, and, and if you're thinking um, and, and, you're, and, you're, and you're a rational human being, coming back to clarity of thoughts by what we eat, what we drink, what we consume, by whether we watch it or listen, et cetera, then you know that there are certain things that are not okay and that we need to overcome. And that's why I think the moral law that was brought about becomes so important because we have to have a standard. We have to have a standard that we adhere to. And that standard has to govern life. Otherwise there'll be chaos. And irrespective of the, what I believe are false philosophies that are pushed out there, there can be no peace in chaos. There needs to be law and order. And that we find from that moral law and the way in which we then govern ourselves from a physical, mental, and spiritual state needs to be aligned to that moral law to ensure a peaceful coexistence in society as much as possible. Sorry, those are just my thoughts. Uh, thank you, Linda. It's, it's important. And this saying that says, um, um, one is called YOLO, you only live once. Right, so that's almost like I do what I want, I do as I please, I live as I please, etc. Because of what our impacts other people, right? So that almost tells you just being like whatever you want to indulge in, indulge it because you only live once. And this is where society is pushing us, and this is what the education we're getting from the media, from um, from our our society at large. And also, there's one that says I'm perfectly imperfect. So if you're perfectly imperfect, then it's okay to <laughs> indulge in a little um, a little wine or a little um, type of music that will have an influence upon your thoughts so, and actions. Or even if I little indulge in pornography, it's not a problem. I'm not arming anyone. Not realizing that these things will change you by and by as time goes on. And this is what society is not addressing, that what's the root of problem a lot of our problems? Like you brought up a one like pedophilia, example, like, from when the floodgates of LGB, the LGBTQT community came out, obviously, they're trying to find their way through that as well. They're trying to um, align themselves with the um, LGBTQ community. But obviously, um, they say, no, you're not part of us. But it just shows that, that where do you draw the line when it comes to intemperance? And society is not addressing these problems. And this is where we are, the problem that we have right now. So thank you for the comment. Thank you so much, Linda, for those comments. They are um, very thought-provoking because, yes, what we do 
um, truly influences our behavior. And I mean, I was quite surprised that the amount of divorces that you showed in the statistics, Lewis, 56% of divorces um, can cite the reason for the breakup is obsessive interest in pornography. I mean, that's high. That really is. Um, and you brought up things which were pretty obvious, you know, like if um, uh, a person, a man is um, involved in pornography, it will affect, or a woman, it, it will affect their, their relationship. Um, these are blur, obvious things, but we don't always look at them. Um, and 70% of men aged 18 to 24 visit porn sites at least once a month. I mean, and that's at least, that doesn't say how frequently. So these statistics were quite um, definitely eye-opening, Edgar was saying. Um, so I'm not sure if there's any other hands, but yeah. Any other comments? Even the thing, the thing about it affecting your blood, you know, if we, what we eat and what we drink can, if it goes into our bloodstream and whether, if we're eating at the wrong, it's not, and it's not just about eating or drinking, but um, it will affect our, um, whether it's something good or bad, it will go into our blood and affect our mind, our thoughts that we make. If somebody's frightened, you know, like they say, if um, um, when animals are killed for food and they're stunned, and the release of hormones that go into the bloodstream is so high and that can be found and identified in the blood. So when you eat animals with blood in them, the effect of what's going on in their body because of the effect, because of being chased or stunned or whatever to kill them, you're eating that as well. And surely that's gonna have an impact on the choices that you make. So hence the importance of making a temperate choice when it comes to what we eat. Yeah. Any other thoughts or comments? If not, okay, I'll give people more of a chance. There's a... Um, I can comment on that. Let me just put my... Yes, um, I just want to comment on, on, the, um, on, the, on the animal part of it, eating it. And I have seen that a person who eats meat is susceptible to anger rather than a person who eats um, vegan or vegetarian meal. So I do really agree with you in terms of um, blood that is um, in the animals and we consume it through meat, that it changes our, our the way we, 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 the way we, we, we behave mostly, that's what I want to say. The, the way we behave, it, it's being changed by the, 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 the things that we eat. Um, yes, but that's not to say that if you're um, plant-based, diet you're not going to get angry i mean i mean i know i get angry from time to time jesus angry was angry when he was in the synagogue and he flipped the tables because of the um, bad choices that people were making in the synagogue but i do agree that your food can and will and does affect your mood and your behavior i know in fact what you said reminded me of a little cartoon that i've seen in i think it was in home oh, yeah, in Madagascar. But anyway, um, where the um, lion wanted to eat his friends because he's a carnivore and that's what he eats. And when he saw his friends, he saw them as food. Um, and you kind of make a light kind of jest about it. And I'm not saying that just because you eat that you're going to want to eat your friends. But it, but it highlights that your thoughts are affected by your actions. Definitely, by your actions. Um, I don't want to focus too much on food and drink because, as Lewis said, you know, temperance is everything. It could be how much money you're spending on a car, for instance. You know, is it temperate the amount that you're spending just because you like it? You know, I might be touching some corns there. I don't know, but uh, yeah, temperance affects everything, every aspect of our life. 
Any other thoughts or comments? Well, you've got temptation everywhere in life. So that's what we've got to think of and focus at the end of the day. Because if you look all around us, there's always temptation. If we don't follow God, we're going to begin to tempted. So that's why we always have to have faith and to follow Christ. Thank you, Louise. That, so, yeah, thank you, Louise. And um, I'd like to bring out the point that um, Lewis made in, I think it was my, it may have been his second to last slide when he highlighted that with men, things seem to be impossible and it's hard for you to change your behavior on your own. But with God, all things, and we're not talking about some things, all things are possible. Um, yeah, that's, that's brilliant. So just to remind you, if you don't have any more questions, our challenge for this week, can you remind everyone, Lewis? Yeah, so our challenge this week, I'll just put it up so you can see it. So, so, the, so is the invitation. So the challenge this week is to join us um, 7 p.m. UK time and come to the study because um, we this is where we we are going through something called the powerhouse, God's powerhouse. And if you want power, you want um, you want freedom from any bad habits or indulgence that you suffer with. We know um, your family or friends suffer with. Come to join us. Join us. I'm so invited. I invite you to for those who don't know God to come and see, taste and see, taste and see for yourself. And so come and join us 7 p.m. And, and the second part of the challenge is to acknowledge your intemperance. For example, like I personally like, struggle with timing, right? I'm not the best person like, with timing. So that's something that I actively work upon. And we have to acknowledge that, yeah, I am struggling with this thing. I'm in need of this thing. Accept where you are in temperance some time. I spend some time with God and try to spend time with God every each morning and, and also at nighttime before I go to bed, just to support my, my faith in, in a power that knows that you're intemperate, then start each day actively address the problem. Like I said, get, get, if you suffer, like if you can't stop yourself from watching pornography, obviously you can actively, like for example, you can change the setting on, on your internet. So then it's strict. So then, you, so no pornography. So even you type in a pornographic um, word in, it will block you. Yeah, block yourself, <laughs> block yourself. Get some, get some, and, accountability partner and this can be for not just pornography but for and um, like you say like finance issues for, for for whatever problem you have or like me your timing like like get someone to be accountable that like, how's your time this week and just and actively address this problem but don't actively address it um in a singular way i'm saying come to our studies i'm saying also look clean up your diet if you can and get your diet cleaned up because that's what because because any day that's the foundation clean up your diet and actively um address the problem and see where that takes you thank you thank you very much lewis um so before we um switch off we are going to have oh sorry yes there was a there was a question as well do where do they get the link for the bible study if one of the admin can put the yeah put the spiritual group down then we'll spiritual it. group that's right the, the link yeah. to the spiritual group and then all the adverts for the bible studies come up in the spiritual group yeah yeah it, but it's every week it is every week it's every week link, yeah so if link, you can put the link in yeah yeah the link is a true temperance international link but it's a different password so um you'll need to get that information thank you oh there we go there's the zoom meeting Thank you. So that's 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 the link. Um, yeah, I think yeah, there yeah. was possibly one other question in there. Let's see. There's a question from Colin. Louise, could you read that one out, or shall I? Okay. Do we realise that the fruit of the spirit? The identifying mark of the spirit of God within you, so people can tell if you're God's child or not because of 
whether or not you exhibit the characteristics that God says you would. Mm. Um, so do we realize that the fruit of the spirit is not your Sabbath keeping, tithe giving, tongue speaking, or any such thing? The last part, the ultimate pinnacle of the fruit in Galatians 5.22 is temperance, i.e. self-control. Okay, that was a comment. That Thank you, Colin. Great. Thank you. It wasn't really a question. I would, yeah, I would, admire, I would tell Colin to come to our studies because um, obviously just to identify, it says the fruit of the spirit, not the fruits. So all together is, is a fruit. You can't separate them. So just to add that, that, that obviously the, the, the fruits of the spirit. So that fruit consists of temperance, it consists of kindness, meekness, etc. Against there's no law against these. So it's a it's a holistic um work. But um I would um tell Colin to join our study at 7 p.m. and I'm sure we can um definitely get deep into that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay then so um we do have somebody that would like to share a testimony. Um Louise medical missionary Louise so just in case Louise was thinking, oh, I didn't say I was going to show it to Okay, medical missionary Louise, I believe you had somebody that you wanted to share um, a testimony of the detox, because that's going to be part of helping to cleanse your system. Okay, if we don't hear an unmute, we can... Sharon, you're muted, Sharon. Sorry, I was reading the comment. I wasn't sure if it was one that needs to be um, read out. So perhaps if that person wishes to message me, if they want me to read it out, then that's fine. They may wish to be and remain anonymous, which is fine, but I'm not sure that they actually need request uh, to be read out. Okay. Yes, there's comments coming up on the chat as well. I'll, for those that are on YouTube, obviously you can't see the comments, so I'll read it. Somebody just said that they missed the presentation. Is it possible to watch on YouTube? Yes, it is. You can, it's on YouTube now, and if you want, you can just take it back or just wait until we fit, ended it, and then you can watch it back and share it with um, friends, family, and even people that you don't know. <laughs> you know, perhaps they might not, might not be your friends, um, but um, perhaps after sharing it with them, they may end up being our friends. Okay, oops. They may end up being a friend. Yeah. Okay, so I'm not sure if Louise is on here. Louise, medical missionary Louise, Louise Reed. Can anybody see her? No, unfortunately she may have dropped off. Okay, that's fine, we'll leave that. Okay, so if there are no further comments for Lewis, we'll just let you know that next week, next week we have uh, another good presentation for, well, they're all gonna be good, they're all good presentations, but, the present presenter next week. I'm, I'm, it's just on the tip of my tongue. I'm about to tell you who it is, but the person next to me is saying, uh, may, might not be, might not be, just hold on. So I don't want, well, I'll tell you anyway. And if I get it wrong, I get it wrong. Okay, because if it's not next week, it'll be the week after. <laughs> okay. But I. You're muted, Sharon. Yeah, someone muted me. I don't know. Possibly they were trying to let somebody in, or <laughs> maybe it was a good reason to mute me. But um, I do believe that our presenter next week will be sharing the topic of asthma. <clears throat> yeah, I've had a thumbs up. Yeah, okay. Yes, our presenter next week will be sharing with us um, the topic of asthma. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So if you know anybody who suffers with, or uh, may not be suffering, but has been diagnosed with asthma, um, let them know, let them have the link 
it's the same link as today so even if you want us to let them know before the poster comes out you can just share today's poster it's the same link but um yeah we'll have a, an appropriate poster for asthma so be mindful next week at 3 p.m uk time i only know the south african time which is 5 p.m i should know other times but i don't but um tune in you know what time you came in today and we will have a fantastic um feedback from the challenge for this week and a great presentation for you all our youtube viewers thank you for joining us it's always a pleasure to have you every week and i am taking this moment to say goodbye to you um sorry oh have you hopefully you're still here this is a this is a testimony that's actually been sent to me that i need to read out okay so let's see do we still have yes we still have you youtube sorry i'm on i'm on my phone so i'm trying to like flip between my phone and my messages and and seeing whether or not i'm muted <laughs> okay so bear with me as i read this because i don't have my glasses on so this is a testimony and thank you very much eileen mm -hmm. right. so this is what somebody said thank you for the hypertension recipe given last week mm -hmm. and elaborated earlier so far that they've heard cell oh okay this is i think this is a question celery is that one two three or more sticks okay right so on my first <laughs> yeah i do need my glasses <laughs> on my first attempt i used it with one stick of celery and i called lucille and said i can't take it i can't take the taste but i'm gonna have to drink it anyway and she suggested that i used more sticks of celery so the second time round, I used one and a half sticks and I still didn't like it. But um, it's like I said, it's not about liking your medicine. I'd rather have a, horror, a, a, a medicine that I don't like the flavour of and no illness than have a medicine that tastes wonderful, but I'm still sick. Oh, my device is gone. OK, yeah, I'm back. So, yeah, so the celery to your taste, but make sure it's in there. Tomato, somebody said, is that one, two, three or more tomatoes, cherry tomato size, beefsteak size. Um, for the tomato, I just used one about, um, here's an apple. It was about that size, OK? Um, not a big apple, just a medium-sized apple. So a medium-sized tomato. If you wish to go for a big one, then fine, go for a big tomato. Cherry tomatoes are going to be too small, so you're going to have to have more than one of those, um, maybe about four cherry tomatoes. Um, is there an ideal nutrient rich type of tomato? I do not know, unless Lucille is on here and she may have that information, or if there's a nutritionist on here, perhaps they can tell us. And are all tomatoes the same? Again, I'm not a nutritionist, um, and I'm sure they are slightly different because they are different types of tomatoes. Beetroot, Edgar, can you just get the beetroot out of the fridge for me? Someone's asking, beetroot, how many, what size, and was it raw or cooked? This is raw beetroot. All the foods that you're juicing are going to be raw. If all you can get hold of is cooked beetroot, um, because I know some shops, some places it's difficult to get hold of the raw food, um, I almost got to, to the point of using a cooked beetroot and then what I would have done would have been to just blend it and add water but in terms of beetroots and um, I don't know if you can see the bunch I'm holding here but it would be one of those that I would use in my um so it's not large it's definitely not large um it's probably a little bit smaller than medium but again that's down to your the main thing is to get some beetroot in there and you will see the effect and just to, uh, uh, reminder if you do have this do not be surprised if your stools are very red okay that is normal that should happen your stools and your urine you should see a pink or reddish more of a pinkish tint in your urine and in your stools they will come out red you are what you eat um so yes that reminds me when i was little mum thought i was going to be red because when she was pregnant she ate loads, loads of beetroot. but anyway look 
garlic, I need to clarify, okay, three cloves, some people call them pegs. We're not talking about a whole bulb. We're not talking about three bulbs of garlic. We're talking about the cloves. So, you know, you break, break up the garlic and then you have a clove or a peg, whatever you wish to call it. Three of those, they will be blended um, with the juice after juicing the other ingredients. And then the question said, is the above taken once every day at a certain time of the day? Lucille recommended we take it in the morning. Once is sufficient. All of it in one go. Uh, it depends on how much you like it. It took me a few, well, it was in a glass and I drank the glass, but not, I didn't knock it back. It wasn't a shot. Um, and now also, if you do have high, if you do, if you are on blood pressure tablets, you need to be very, very cautious. You'll need to consult your GP, your, your health practitioner, because garlic is known to lower your blood pressure and you don't want it to drop and plummet, okay? Any more questions? Before, after, or with a meal, or does it not matter at all? I'm not sure about that. Any recommendations? Probably, probably better to do it before you eat. Yeah. Okay. And drink water. Okay. Drink water. Definitely. It's going to lower your blood pressure. Water helps to lower your blood pressure as well. Okay. I hope that has helped with your with your um to to reduce any confusion and it's helped to clarify how to take it. If you are really, really struggling, go back and look at the presentation last week that Sister um, Lucille presented. So if you go back into YouTube and look up the one for hypertension, you will see that how to take it is in there. I hope that helps. And yes, I do still need my glasses. <laughs> right. Yeah, thank you. You're on mute, Sharon. Oh, how long have I been muted? <laughs> Just after you made the comments of your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do, do we have any further, any clothing, closing comments from Lewis or Louise or anybody else on the TTI admin? If not, we'll take this opportunity to say thank you for joining us on YouTube. And we'll say goodbye to our YouTube listeners. See you next week, hopefully.